Hi there, and welcome back to another animal series on my channel. This week, we will be going through an animal that I have worked with in the wild, and that is the bonobo. So I've worked with this species in the wild a few years ago. I spent nine months in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in a small camp called Louis Catal, where I really got to know these animals on an individual level. And I wrote about them in this book, um, A Zoologist Stumblings in Africa. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. So if you're interested more in bonobos and what it's like working alongside them, take a look. And now, onto the facts. So the bonobos are only found in one country and they've got a very limited range within this country. They're found only in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, south of the Congo River. We're not quite sure how far south their range um, extends because it's quite difficult to actually study bonobos in the wild. It's estimated to be between 10 and 50,000 individuals. But as I've just mentioned, the remoteness of the species habitat, the patchiness and how sparsely distributed they are just makes it really difficult to just estimate a very a reasonable population size. They are classified as endangered by the IUCN and it's thought the numbers are dropping slowly but again we're still not entirely certain. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is very unstable um, it's a very poor country there's a lot of civil unrest and there's a lot of deforestation which is one of the main threats to the bonobo so it's not very good place for them to live they've got a lot of issues coming in. Um, in some of the more remote poorer areas they are actually hunted for food um, and I can't blame people who have got very limited resources going out and hunting these bonobos, but still, it's not nice to... Uh, the species was only recognised as its own unique species in 1929, and before that it was considered as a pygmy chimpanzee, which some people still refer to them as today. Um, but there are quite a few differences in the two species. The bonobos are much leaner, um, slightly smaller, they've got more silky, darker skin, uh, fur even, their faces are completely black and they've got a central parting uh, in their forehead hair and behavioural um, they're very different as well which I'll go to in this video. Both species share 98.7% DNA with us making them our closest living relative and one of the other differences between chimps and bonobos is there's been no recorded tool use within the bonobos, unlike chimps, which has multiple cases of tool use recorded. The groups are, like the elephants I did in my last series, led by the females, and group sizes are around 30 to 80 individuals, which fragment into smaller foraging parties through the day. They sometimes regroup. They usually regroup in the evenings, but they can venture off for days at a time in smaller little groups foraging around. Uh, once the females, the young females are old enough, they will leave the group. This is around nine years old or older and they go off and join a different group. Whereas the males, they will stay with in the group that they are born with. They will stay with their mothers and their rank within the group actually depends on where their mother sits within the group as well. The females will give birth roughly every four to five years and Gestation period is eight months, so not too different from the humans. Um, and then the females will look after their young for the next four to five years. They may have a, another youngster within this time period, and you sometimes see females with two young bonobos around. They're fairly useless to start with. They're very dependent on their mothers. They just, at a very young age, just pretty much just cling to their mothers and just feed on her milk. Once they get to a certain age, about a year or two old, they become very mobile and very playful. And play is a very important part of the bonobo's development. When you see all these youngsters together, it's really cute and they're all just rolling around, playing, swinging around. Um, and yeah, it just develops social skills important in later life. They're fairly small primates. When standing upright, they're about four feet, well, just under. And the males are around 40 kilograms and the females are slightly smaller, around 32 kilograms. They live in captivity, it's thought to about 40 to 50 years, but in the wild we're not entirely certain what they get up to. Like all primates, they do spend time in the trees, but they actually do spend a lot more time on the forest floor, walking around on their knuckles, looking for food such as fruits, uh, they'll find tubers, um, 
even eat on caterpillars, earthworms, they'll eat leaves, um, and they will even eat meat. So I've been lucky enough to actually witness them hunting a red collarbus monkey. Um, it was very vocal, very frantic, and they were just all over the place and fighting over the dead monkey and they were sharing it. I've also been lucky enough as well to witness a tiger hunt, which was completely different. They were silent for the hunt um, and we suddenly realized they grabbed a diker and started eating it with no vocal sounds from the group. Probably so they don't alert other groups into the food that they've got, or even individuals within the group, they want to keep the food to themselves. They'll also venture into shallow waters. They're not too worried about water like the chimps. Um, and they do stand upright in the water when they're looking for mainly lilies and smaller insects on the surface. They are, as I've mentioned, very vocal animals. They communicate a lot through different calls. So they've got lots of high-pitched squeaks, peeps. Uh, little coos, even little chattery laughs if you're lucky to hear them. They also, as they are famous for, use sex as a means of conflict resolution, strengthening bonds, and pretty much everyone within the group except the mothers and sons will have sex with each other. Another behaviour which I know I've mentioned that they don't use tools but could be considered as tool use is branch dragging. So this is thought to be from the males trying to show some sort of dominance. They'll grab a large branch, sometimes even break down small trees, running through the forest floor, dragging this branch behind them, um, probably as some sort of intimidation. I've mentioned the groups quite often spread out. Usually as nighttime falls, they get very vocal calling to each other back and to, um, and they tend to come together as one group where they'll descend, ascend into the trees and they'll even actually make little nests every night. They don't usually reuse these nests, um, but yeah, they will fold all the branches over together, make this lovely comfy br uh, nest, and then just spend the night up in the trees. That is some of my facts on the bonobos. If you're interested in bonobos, I do have some playlists, which I'll put a link to in a second, which you can find out about the different videos I've done. Um, one of my favorite ones is called the Red Bonobos of Louis Catal. There was a group known as the P family, the whole family starts with the same letter, so P, there was Pembe, uh, there was Pan, and there was Peito. And they had this slightly reddish tinge to them. But you can see that in the video, I'm gonna link in a second. Um, and again, if you are interested in finding out more what life is like living around bonobos in a remote part of the rainforests, check out my book on Amazon. And that is it for this series. If you have any comments, any suggestions, any species you'd like me to feature in the future, please drop a comment below. Um, don't forget to, to subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and until next time, I'll see you then.